Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm so sorry for the delays. I will be creating a schedule and posting it soon so that you know I'll always have consistent videos. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. So this week I'm hoping we'll have pretty much all the tools we need to start constructing a full visual novel game. So you can see we have a box for the name and the dialogue and when I click uh, the dialogue and name are fed through and same with the images they alternate and it's really the bread and butter bread and bones whatever you call it of uh of making a visual novel game so let's start by making two empty game objects for our characters you can make more if you put more in your dialogue but go to your hierarchy right click create an empty object and then make the name David or exactly how it is in your dialogue text file. You see I have David and Rachel. Make sure you name them exactly how it is in your text file, just right here. And then the second thing you want to do is click Add Component. And if you search for Sprite, you should have Sprite Render a pop-up. Just click on it and we don't need to add anything at all yet. So make the exact same thing for Rachel add the name, add a sprite render, that's it for now. And you can make one for every character you have in your dialogue file, uh, in this one. So now that we have our two empty objects, we need to import the sprites. Now I use some open art. Uh, David is a cyclops and Rachel is a spider. I just went to open game art and I'll post the links to these. Um, all credit is due to the people who made them. I did not make this art. But just simply drag the image into your assets resources folder. And then I believe it'll probably default to a texture type. Under texture, it'll probably say texture. Uh, but you want to select Sprite 2D and UI. So make sure you select Sprite and then just click apply. And that's all you need to do. And make sure your sprite is named exactly as your characters are, just as we did with the game object. So David and Rachel are both sprites, and then David and Rachel the game object. They should have the exact same name. All right, so that's all we need to mess with in Unity for right now, in the Unity editor. But let's go over some changes in the code. So first, to make them flip back and forth, from the left, right, the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, we added a new item in our dialogue lines. So there's an R signifying the position is right, or an L. And you could add on to this. You could have C mean center, U mean up. It would just be how you add to the code. So let's see how we did that. Uh, click over to your dialogue parser. And we only made a few changes here. So in addition to your list of lines, we're going to have a list of images. And remember how our poses are 0, 1. If we had more, it would be 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and this is where images of 0 references pose 0, if that makes sense. And maybe later on, as you get more characters, you want to have a clear way of organizing them. Uh, I remember our character class has a list of images. But for now, for our purposes, we'll just have one list that contains all of the characters' images. But once again, I encourage you to uh, improve on this organization by storing the images in a character class and interfacing through that. Uh, for now, just create a list of images of type sprite. And let's look at our dialogue line struct. So really, all we have to do is add public string position and then add it as a parameter for our constructor as well. We have string position, POS, and we say this position equals POS. That's it. Now let's go down to our initialization. It's basically the same, except now we instantiate the memory for images, and we have a function called load images, just like we had a load dialog. And so load images, it's basically going through each line in our dialogue lines, and it's getting the character's name, and then it's finding the sprite that has the same name as the character's name. 
And if our list already contains that image, then we throw it out. But if it does not contain that image and it's a new image, it's going to add it to the list. So this is a very like rudimentary, simple way of doing this. But for our purposes, it works uh, for now. And this is looking at our resources folder. So if you remember, resources.load will look for this specific folder. So make sure your sprites are in here. I know it's messy. We should organize it soon, probably. But it will look at resources, and it will load uh, the sprites with the same names as the character name in the dialog. So that's what that's doing. It's populating the list. And then these are the same. We have our git name, git content, git pose. But now we had to add git position. And this is just going to return uh, the position, lines at the line number dot position. But one change we made to the pose is now instead of returning a number, we're having it return a public, public sprite up here. And that means we're going to uh, change what it returns. So before it just returned lines at line number dot pose, which was a number, which is a number. And so now we're going to use that number as the index of images, if that makes sense. So now we're trying to get the pose at that pose number. And um, yeah, so that's all we have to change there. And then load dialog is the same. We'll just ignore that. Split CSV line is the same. Really, all you have to worry about, change the return of git pose, add git position, add load images, and that's really it for our parser. Uh, and so this just shows that if you wanted to add more information to each uh, dialog line, it's just as simple as adding to the struct and making sure there's a function that can get the value from the list of lines. All right, well, enough of that. Let's go to the dialog box because this is where a lot of the new stuff is happening. So just as before, um, we have a string for dialog for name. Now we have a sprite for the pose and a string for position. And we have our custom GUI style from before, but now add a second custom style. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm saying it's a custom style name for the name box. And this is all the same. Now in our update function, we have a few changes. So the first main thing is we have a function called reset images. So just write that there because we want the screen to start blank. We want to, if we have David show up, when we click to get Rachel's dialog, we want David to disappear. So that's what this function will do. And then here we get the name dialog pose and position and then we want to display the image that we got from the pose and position so add these right now and now we'll fill in what those functions are so we have reset images and if the name is a character's name if it's not null then we're going to find the character uh, the character game object with that same name so if you remember our empty objects It'll look for this David object, for example, and it will get its sprite render and just set the sprite to null. So that's all we're doing. Um, in display images, we're going to set the sprite to one of the images we just imported, but when we reset, we just set it to null. That's it. And so now going to display images to show you, it does the same thing. It finds the game object with the same name as the character that has a dialog line and then we're going to get the sprite render component and then we just set the sprite to whatever pose we loaded from our parser it's as simple as that now we have this set sprite positions and this is where the l and r come into place so we're going to write that function and now we're going to fill it in so if the position is an L, we're just setting it, this is just what arbitrarily looked okay for this screen, but these aren't set for screen resizing. So I actually recommend, instead of doing absolute positions like 3 and 2, 
do it relative to the screen width, like width over three or something like that, because then it will always be at one third the screen width. Um, but like I said, right now, this is just getting the job done. Um, I'm sure you can play around with the positions and styling. Anyway, we're saying if it's at the left, it's at negative three, two, zero. And if it's at the right, it's at three, two, zero. Uh, the, once again, I just picked random numbers that looked okay on my screen. And if you wanted to add others, um, I'll just make a comment. Um, you could say if position equals C, then maybe the transform is something at like, um, like zero to zero, because that would be the center. Uh, you could add anything you want related to the position. Whoops. And then on GUI, the only difference here is that we made a new text field and I messed with the sizing and position of the dialog text field, but all we did was add the custom style name or the second custom style we created at the top. So just make sure you have um, two text fields of different sizes, uh, one to fit the name, one to fit the dialogue, and that they have two different styles. All right, it's as easy as that. So let's mess with those styles now to actually get what uh, we want. So go to your dialog box object, and you'll see there's these big complicated styles here. Uh, you should have two in this dialog box component. So we go to custom style, and once again, I used open game art for the dialog box. You can see I have these message boxes here, and they were just a big sheet of different message boxes. I just kind of, uh, I just used like MS Paint to uh, get this message box out of the sheet, but you can use whatever you want. So I use that and set it to my background. And then the text color can be whatever you like. And then the only other things to pay attention to are the padding. So the text will always appear in the upper leftmost corner, which if we play our game, you can see mine's padded so that it's not starting up here at the white corner, but it's going inside of the box. So make sure you set the padding to what works for your specific message box. And then if you don't want Arial as your font, I'm going to post the link to uh, an open a free font that is the arcade style. And you can import any TFF font files that you want using this. And then you can set the size that works for you, uh, the alignment, etc anything you want. There's a lot here that you can play with, but mainly it's the background, your text color, your font, and the padding. All right, now it'll be the same for the name box. I happen to use a similar box. You could also just make a, um, a custom box where the name box is fitted into it and make the text field just appear over that as blank, if that makes sense. So like if you have um, let me play. So like if this name box was just built into this graphic, if they were all one graphic, you could skip this custom style and just have the, the style be blank, but make sure you set the position um, to wherever the name tab is in the graphics. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, please let me know. But um, yeah, so I just set the name box to be similar, just with different padding, different font sizes. Um, and that's really all there is to it. So now the ultimate test, I know I've been showing you my version, but the ultimate test is adding dialogue and seeing if it works. So I only have two characters right now, um, but actually let's have Rachel have some more dialogue. Um, Let's see, they're talking about her cat. Um, I think cats are awesome. And then David saying, I like dogs more. I don't know, whatever, right? 
oops, Rachel is 1, not 0, and David is 0, and to the right. Okay, so let's see if their dialogue is extended. So we press play, and then this is the same as before, and see, she stays there. So this is how you could make long dialogue. All you have to do is just keep copying these values and just add more dialogue to Rachel. And that's really all there is to it. So I am going to end this series here for now, unless you want me to continue it, which I'm happy to do, because this is the basis for making an entire game. You really can do a lot with just these tools. And I admit, this is definitely not the perfect way to make this game. There are much better ways to organize this, especially if you have more characters, more dialogue. But I highly encourage you to continue with it and find those ways to improve it because I want you to learn and make your own projects. Anyways, thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you guys next time.